Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy Six on the Six Side Gaming Channel. I am back with another What to Do with Soul Calibur breakdown character guy for you today. And this time, we're going to be talking about Raphael. So, unfortunately, I was trying to do this on my computer, and my editing program is acting stupid right now. So, I got to go back and do it on the PS4 share play. So, if you hear the spinning fan in the background, that's the fan for my PS4. So, sorry for that. But anyways, today we're going to be talking about Raphael, and Raphael is a very fun character to play with. I feel like this iteration of Raphael may be his best iteration of the character, so that's very, very good. So Raphael is a very poke-heavy character. You're going to be using 4B a lot with this character, so on and so forth. 4B is like one of his better pokes. Then he got some stance mix-ups that you're going to be using a lot with him. He got some... His horizontals is not that great, but he got two good horizontals that I believe is good. His forward AA and his back A2 is two good horizontals. And yeah, we're going to begin to start with this guy. So, the first move we're going to be talking about is Raphael's AA. And Raphael's AA is his 12 fame punish. It does 20 damage. Um... And it is a natural hit combo. So if you was to get hit with the first A, the next A is guaranteed. And on block, you cannot, it, it, or like you should see, it hits side steppers. And on block, you cannot dodge, Um, you cannot duck or, or anything at all. Just move jails on block. So, yeah, that's very important to know. Um, Yeah, so like I said, hit side steppers, as you, as you can see, it hits both sides. So that's very very good. It does twenty damage, natural hit combo. So that's always good. Um, the only thing about this move is that the range is not that great, so you have to be really up close to punish with this move. So that's not great, but he has another punisher that we're gonna talk more about later. But moving on, we're gonna be talking about his A and B. His A B is a high low. Um. Altogether, it does about 22 damage, I believe, or 24 damage. Um, you could block the low, so yeah, and even it doesn't gel. So if you get hit with, if you block the A, you could um duck. So that's very very good. Um, this move, even though the second hit is a vertical, you cannot sidestep the second hit at all. So, that's very good to know. Another thing about this move is that it's neutral on block. So, that's very good for Raphael because he has a 10 frame move that you go into, as you can see. So, that's very, that's very good for a frame trap situation. So, moving on, we have his forward AA. His forward AA is 18 frames and it's a high. Both hits is a high. Um... And it's his probably one of his better long range, like longest range horizontal attacks to catch side steppers. The only thing about this move is that it is a high, so you can easily crouch under his forward AA. Another thing about the move, if I could showcase it, is that it doesn't gel, so you could block the first hit of the forward A and duck the second hit, and you can get punished. So, you got to be very, very careful about that. The opponent really, really has to know that move is coming. It's pretty quick. So, it's not like how Nightmares, um, like, Ford AA is. Like, you can easily, like, duck that move. But this move, you can't easily duck it. Duck it. So, you can probably get away with it. Um, so, yeah. So, it's duckable. So, you can't punish it. Another thing about the move is that if your opponent does block the move, it is 12 frame punishable, as I'm going to showcase. Sorry, I think I'm not. It is punishable by 12 frames. But if you if you hit your opponent with this move, you are plus four. So you could do any type of pressure you want after that, being plus four. Not any type of pressure, but uh, uh, with the according frames, you could do pressure with being plus four. So, so now another thing about this move is that if the second hit hits counter hit, you're going to be plus eight. You get a different type of um, 
stun hit. You get the spinning stun hit, and then you're gonna be plus eight, and you can do uh, numerous amounts of things with your plus eight. You could even do forward. You can even do forward AA again if you feel like they're gonna sidestep. So it's pretty good. And another thing is I probably didn't mention, but this move is a natural, um, natural, um, hit combo. So just keep that in mind. So next move we're gonna be talking about is is down forward A. Is down forward A is 20 frames, uh, and it's a mid horizontal attack. Now the range on this move is not that great, but it's good for this purpose, and is that if you hit this move four times, and on the fourth time it will cause a lethal hit. So it's very good for trying to catch side steppers or duckers, anything like that with this move. So yeah. One thing about the move, though, is if your opponent blocks a move, it is punishable by 12 frames. So keep that in mind. But if you was to do it for max range, you could then maybe not get punished. But Raphael is really not the greatest. Like, I shouldn't probably show a Raphael because his AA is not that good. But with range-wise. But All right, so now we got Hills, down A's. Down A's pretty generic. Almost like almost everybody else is down A's. They're high crushes. They're 12 frames. Not really special there. But then we got his down back A's. Down back A's are low. It's 20 frames. It high crushes. And it's pretty good. It's, it does, um, does 15 damage. 15 and 18 encounter hit. So that's pretty good. Only thing about this move is that you don't have frame advantage after it hits. So if you try to retaliate like with anything after you hit, not I was saying you're gonna get beat out. So just be careful about that. And it's very punishable on block. It's negative 16 on block as well. So just be careful when using this move. So now we have his back A. His back A is to me is a very good move. Um, it causes a mini combo on regular hit or counter hit or counter hit. It causes a combo. Um, it catches side steppers, as you can see. It catches side steppers to the left, and it catches side steppers to the right. And if it hits, it catches you get a mini combo. So that's very very good as well. Um. And it's evasive as well. It's a very good evasive move. The only thing about this move is that it's a high, so your opponent can easily duck under the move, so you never just want to just throw it out there like that because your opponent can duck under it. But, like, I, going back to what I was talking about with it being evasive, as you can see, if your opponent try to attack with vertical attacks, it just spins right out the way of the vertical, and you can punish your opponent just like so. You can even use it in between strings that have vertical like the third is a vertical or any string where it's a vertical and you're going to be able to move out the way you can use back a so it's a very it's a very good move sauce mini combo very very good now the only bad thing about this move is that it is punishable by 16 frames 16 frame punishable mm, yeah that's the one bad thing about that move so the next move we're going to be talking about is his back forward a, um a his back forward a is a high is 20 frames and you're not really going to be using this move too much unless you have like a real good read on your opponent but yeah since this move is a high your opponent can't crouch under it so you have to be very very careful about that another thing is that if your opponent blocks his move is punishable by 12 frames so also watch out for that so the main thing you're going to be using his move for is if your opponent whips a light attack or not light attack but a horizontal attack you could lethal hit punish your opponent with this move because it causes lethal hit in that certain situation so keep that in mind so now we're gonna be talking about his jumping A. His jumping A is pretty okay. Um, jumping A is 32 frames. Is negative 12 on hit, but it high crushes, and having a high crush is always good. And it causes back turn 
if you hit the opponent with the move. So that's good. So moving on, we're gonna be talking about his full crouch A's. Full crouch A is pretty much his down A. Um, same properties, high crushes, nothing special. And then you have his wild rising A's. Wild rising A is what is wild rising A? Wild rising A is 18 frames. It's negative four on hit and it's plus eight. No, negative four, negative four on block and plus eight on hit. So that's pretty good. So moving on, we're going to be talking about his vertical attack. So his vertical, his B attack is 14 frames. And he has follows from there. He has BB, then he has BBB, and he has a BBBB. So these are four, this is his 14 frames. The first two hits of the BBBB shrink is a natural combo. As you can see, the opponent is able to block the third hit. And also, the first two hits is a mid, while the third hit is a high. So, you have to be very, very careful about that. So, I just showcase also that even on a counter hit, you're not going to be able to hit with the third hit of the B. Even on counter hit. So, BB is 10 frames punishable. So, you got to be... Sorry, BB is 14 frames punishable. So, yeah. BBB can interrupt your opponent if they try to punish you off of a BB. So you can mix it up. Sometimes you use B, and sometimes you use BB, and then sometimes you use BBB. It's, it's like a little mind game with him. Now, the third hit of the B can be guard impact or reversal edge, so you have to be very, very careful about that. Another thing is since the third hit is a, a vertical, it can be stepped. But it can only be stepped if your opponent was to delay the third B or if you was to delay the third B. If you don't delay the third B, then you can hit your opponent. But if you was to delay the third B, then your opponent can't step it, as you can see. So, yeah. That's very good to know. So, moving on. What do we got? What did we got? All right. So, then... The third hit can also be high um ducked, right? So it could be ducked or any move that high crushes it. So keep that in mind. Now there's just frames to these moves, and the just frames versions just add a little bit more damage to it. So the last two hits on the BBs can be just frame. Now as I'm going to show, you could just frame the third hit, and you could just frame the, the fourth hit. Now, another thing is, let's see what I'm showcasing. So, on nat on a natural combo, if you was a hit with the second hit, the third and fourth hit won't follow up. But if you was a hit with the second hit, and the first hit was, and you hit with the second hit on a, uh, a counter hit... You could hit as as you can see the following three hits will hit counter hit if you whip the first hit and hit the second hit. So keep that in mind. So moving on, we're gonna be going back and talking about the just frame. So if you should just do one just frame, it would do 34 damage and 36 damage on counter hit. If you was a hit with both just frames though. Regular, if you hit no just frames at all, you're going to do 30 damage altogether from all four hits. And if you used to do both just frames, you're going to do 40 damage. So it's be it's very good to learn the just frames so you can know the damage. Now, after the third hit of the B, you could press back. And you could go into his game of the vague stance. And you could also do the instant prep from there. And we talked about the insta prep in my last video about Raphael. So if you haven't watched that video, make sure to go check out the video on how to do the insta prep and so on and so forth. But moving on from there, you can go into game evade mix ups off of the third hit of the B, or you can go into insta prep and do stuff like this. And that's very good as well. So keep that in mind. So moving on, we're going to be talking about BBK. The BBK. The third is all three hits are mids, and on if the second hit hits as a counter hit, then the next two hits the the K is gonna automatically hit. But regular wise is not a natural hit combo. 
So moving on, we're going to be talking about his 4B. So his 4B is like the meat and potatoes. I don't know why I said that. But anyway, the 4B is like the, the main game tool you're going to be using for Raphael. His 4B is 10 frames. So that makes him one of the few characters in his game with a 10 frame punish. So that's very, very good. And he has follow-ups. He has 4B, he has 4BB, and he has 4BBB. So as I'm going to show, the first two hits of the 4BB is a high, while the third is a mid attack. So you could duck the first two hits, but you got you can't um duck the third hit. Another thing I'm going to show is that if the 4B hits counter hit, the next two follow-up hits for BBB is guaranteed. So yeah. Keep that in mind. Another thing is after you can do 4B and then press back and go to game invade. And from there you can get his insta, insta prep stuff. And I made the video about that. So like I said, go check out that video about how to do insta prep with Raphael. Because it's very, very important with his punishes. Because he has the best punishes in the game. But yeah. So 4BB, if you hold this, the second B, puts you into prep stance as well. So 4B by itself is negative 12 frames, but there's kind of ways you can avoid this, and that's by doing the game evade. But if your opponent has like a long range, long I said range, long range uh, attack that's 12 frames, they would hit you out of it. But you could go into prep, insta prep, and insta prep automatically dodges all highs, and most likely your opponent. 12 frame 12, 12 frame move will be a high so keep that in mind now for bb as you can see on the screen that was going on is negative 14 so the most you could do is hold b to go into prep stance and after you hold b to go into prep stance to not get punished completely you could do a reversal edge just like so and get away from being punished now, 4BBB is negative 16 frames. There's no way you can avoid this punish at all. So, keep that in mind. So, next move we're going to be talking about is B down. So, the way you do these inputs, you have to, like, quickly press B and then down. And you're going to be able to do these type of inputs. And SoCal is pretty much the only game that has these type of inputs. And this move is... Let me see how many frames is it. This move is 18 frames. So it's an 18 frame blow. And when you press B down B, you get a follow up. And on you could block the second hit, but if it hits as a counter hit, then both attacks will hit. And if you get hit by one attack, you cannot step the other attack as well. So But yeah, but if it doesn't hit counter hit, then you could Hit, get hit by the first um, B down and then block the second one. So moving on, then we have another type of these weird input moves when you press B and then back as quickly as possible. So it's like a sliding motion. And this move is somewhat long range. It causes a wall splat at the wall as you just saw. And in the like mid screen, the way your opponent checks up, you can immediately get a Ford B, B, B or a Ford B right on your opponent. So that's pretty good. And as you just saw again in Wall Splats. So the next move we're going to talk about is Raphael's down 4B. Raphael's down 4B is 20 frames. And you can hold this to go into prep stance. And when you hold the down 4B to go into prep stance, you can get a combo just like so. Now this move is 14 frames punishable on block. So that's not that good. So, they can get punched by 12 frames or 14 frames, so on and so forth. But, there is a way to make this move safer. And the way to make this move safer is by doing down for a B. And you hold the B and you're going to see a prep stance. While you do this, this puts you into negative 4 instead of negative 14. Now, you can't block in prep stance. But prep stance does automatically dodge his high attacks. So if your opponent tries a high a high on punish, you can punish them just like so. But if they were to go with a mid attack, you would get hit out. And you cannot sidestep or do nothing out of this. So there's a couple things you can do, right? 
So, one thing you could do is do a reversal edge. Another thing is, is that if your opponent tries to punish you with something that's 14 frames or lower, which is most likely a lot of mids in this game, you have a BB attack that is 10 frames that will no most likely clash with the move, as you can see. And then also, you can do a reversal edge, just like I said earlier, and that will also keep you from getting punished as well. So keep that in mind. So one more thing about prep scenes is that you could go in, if you're in prep stage, you could also use this critical edge, but you're not really going to be able to use it in this type of situation because you can't get punished. So keep that in mind. Also keep in mind is that if your opponent uses multi-hitting strings, your reversal edge, if you just, if you don't hold it, can't get punished as well. So next thing we're going to talk about is his down B. His down B is 16 frames and it high crushes. And that's pretty much it about that. Moving on, we're going to be talking about his down back B. His down back B is 18 frames. It does 25 damage. That's pretty good for a low. On block is negative 16. And on hit is negative 4. But you can hold down the B to go into prep sense. And when you do that, on block it will be negative 12. And on hit it will be um neutral so then you could apply pressure with your forward bb shenanigans from there or not for bb but in prep you have bb which is 10 frames so you could apply pressure with that next move we're going to be talking about is Raphael's back b Raphael's back b is 22 frames and it has some high crush properties not half some it does high crush so that's very very good uh Another thing about his back B is that you could go into prep stance with it as well if you hold B. So that's very, very good. Now, as you can see, it high crushes. And if you hit with this counter hit, if you hold B, all of this is guaranteed. BBB is guaranteed if you hit with this move counter hit. So that's very, very good. That's 63 or is that 53 i can't see it. that's pretty pretty good as you can see um nothing else is guaranteed besides bbb after that hits so keep that in mind and if your opponent was a block as you can see it's like we said earlier this move is 14 frame punishable but if you was to do it for max range you could kind of avoid the punish but if your opponent was to block this move and you was to hold B, you're just gonna be in you're gonna be in prep and then you're gonna be in minus four. And then if they try to retaliate with any type of highs, it will automatically dodge the high. So and if they do a mid attack, you could do stuff to get around it like I showcased earlier. And you could also do Gambit Evade out of the prep immediately to try to do something from there. And you can do what I just showed. I'm showing right here. This will avoid the mids and so on and so forth. So that's pretty, pretty good. So moving on, we're going to be talking about quarter circle forward B. Now, quarter circle forward B is a 20 frame mid attack. And it causes that knockdown. And if this move hits, it causes that. And down, down on um, K is guaranteed if that hits. So keep that in mind. And it's a very good Punisher. And it's one of your lethal hit Punishers as well. And then we're going to be talking about that later. And there's a just frame version to this as well. The just frame version just do more damage. It's not faster at all. It just does more damage. So that's pretty good. Now this move is negative 10. So most of the cast cannot punish it. But it can be punished for any character that has a 10 frame move. Which I will showcase. Raphael has a 10 frame move. So, yeah. As you can see, Raphael himself could punish that move. So, yeah. But, I guess the other, most of the cats you could abuse that move. Now we have quarter circle back B. And quarter circle back B is 16 frames. And it has a just frame to it as well. And it has some high crush properties to it. As I'm going to showcase, I think. Let me see if I'm going to showcase this. Yeah, I'm going to showcase it. So, 
Core Circle back. A, has, I mean B, sorry, has some high crusher properties to it as well. So that's pretty good. And this is one of his lethal hits as well, which I will showcase later on. This move is very punishable. Is negative 20, I believe. Let me check. Yeah, that move is negative 20. And this move is pretty much one. It's pretty much... You're only going to be using this move in combos, probably. That's pretty much it. So next move we have is his back forward B. His back forward B is one of those rare situation moves where... And it said mid is 18 frames, but it's really no use for it besides for it the lethal hit properties of it. So as you can see, as your opponent whips a vertical attack and you do back forward B, you're going to get a lethal hit and you could get a full combo, a very strong full combo. Now, you have to be very, very a point with this move. And like I said, this move is very situational. So, yeah. So moving on, we got full crouch bees. Full crouch bees, 16 frames, nothing too special. Then you have, not nah, sorry, you have you have down four B as well. Down four B from full crouch is one of his on lethal hit attacks as well. Uh, high crushes is 18 frames, and if it hits, you get an automatic down K from it. So that's pretty good as well. Then you have his Wild Rising BB. His Wild Rising BB is a 10 frame punish. So he's the only character that I, that I know of that has a 10 frame punish in this game. And he could go into his game and evade after it as well and do game and evade mix ups. Or you could go into a Wild Rising into Insta Prep. And like I said, I have a video that teaches you how to do Insta Prep. So make sure to go watch that video. So yeah. From there, you could do stuff like this, and that is guaranteed if you was to do your insta prep out of your Wild Rising BB. So that's very, very good. Now, moving on from there, we have his Jumping B. His Jumping B is 28 frames. It's a low crush, and you get a down kick guaranteed if this hits. And on block is only minus 10, so it's not that bad at all. It's very, very good actually. So, moving on, we're gonna be talking about his kick attack. So, his standing kick is 12 frames, and his negative 8 on block is neutral on hit. Then you have his forward kick, his forward kick is 16 frames, negative 8 on block, and plus 6 on hit. So, that's oh, that's pretty, that's a pretty good move, and it's a medium attack. Then you have his down forward kick, his down forward kick is 14 frames. Negative four on block and plus six on hit. Then you have his down kick. His down kick is a very good pro. Um, but it's 16 frames. It's negative 14 on block and negative four on hit. Then you have his down back kick. His down back kick is 22 frames. It does the most damage for his lows. It's 20. And it's negative 14 on block, negative two on hit. Then you have his back kick. His back kick is a high. It's 14 frames, negative 6 on block, plus 8 on hit. So that's actually pretty good. Then you have his back forward kick. His back forward kick is pretty one of those situational situational lethal hits, as I'm going to show. This time, it doesn't really have that much good range. But as you can see, if you can catch it, if your opponent whips a kick attack and you do that move it does cause a lethal hit you're not really going to be using that move too much so it's very very situational so you're not really going to be using that too much moving on you have his crouching um kick then you have his wild rising kick so wild rising kick is 14 frames negative two one hit plus eight on block so that's pretty good then you have a jumping kick. A jumping kick is 24 frames. It high crushes. It's negative 8 on block, but it forces crouch. So that's pretty, pretty good. And on hit, it's plus 4. So as you can see, it forces crouch. So you could, dic you could dictate the, mat the pace of the match from there with that move. So... Moving on, we're going to be talking about his dual button attacks. And his first dual button attack is his A plus B. A plus B, 34 frames. And it's plus 2 on 
block and it knocks down hit uh, so it's okay for a break attack and it has pretty good range as well so it has really really good range for a break attack so it's pretty pretty good only thing is not really that plus so you can only really get what AA BB from it mix up or 4 BB or high crushing moves like that so that's pretty good so moving on from there, you have his forward A plus B. His forward A plus B is a mid-high 24 frame move. If it hits, it gives you pretty much a very good frame advantage at plus 8. And you can hold the move as well. And when you hold the button, it does this. And you get a mini combo just like so. So, you can't get that much, but you get a mini combo. So, when the move is blocked, it has evasive properties as well. As you can see, it... It would evade vertical attacks, as you can see, but if you you could hold it, but if you hold it too long, maybe a follow-up hit will hit you. But yeah, just keep that in mind. So, one thing about this move is that the second hit can be ducked or GI'd or reversal edge, as you can see. But if, you're, if your opponent tries to attack in between and get hit by a second hit, it's, it gets you a mini combo. So, yeah. Now... Another thing, as you can see, you could duck the second hit. So, and that's when you do the regular version. But when you do the hold version of the move, it jails. And your opponent cannot do nothing against the move at all. So, that's pretty, pretty good. Can't GI, can't do nothing until after. So, yeah. So, keep that in mind. Now, moving on, we're going to be talking about down A plus B. Now, down A plus B is pretty good. Um, If the second hit connects, it's like a little combo. You can, I use I use it a lot in my combos because it keeps them right there for Oki. Now, you can also start the start combo with it as well. If the second hit hits, you can do um, back A plus B and get a little mini combo from there as well. If it was a hit as a counter hit. Now, you can block... The second hit of down A plus B. So keep that in mind. But it is a mid mid. So that's pretty good. And what am I going to showcase here? This move is also negative 10. So you're pretty much safe against most of the cast. But some characters with the 10 frame moves can punish it. So, as you can see, Raphael himself could punish his move. But, relative, but pretty much everybody else really can't punish his move. So, that's pretty good. Now, also, if this move, if this move hits counter hit, um, both hits will hit. And you get your full combo from there as well. Now, moving on, we're going to be talking about back A plus B. Back A plus B is... A mid mid horizontal and it has a follow up A plus B back A plus B plus A. I mean A again. And it's pretty good. It's pretty good. All three hits is horizontal, it's medium, medium, low. Um now you can block the second hit of the back A plus B. But if it was a hit counter hit, then the second and third hit is guaranteed. So that's pretty, pretty good. That's very, very good, actually. Not just pretty good, it's very, very good. Now, also, if the third hit, which is the low, if I'm going to showcase it, hits by itself, it doesn't. And this is the type of um, property you get from it. You get plus six from it if the third hit hits. But if the third hit hits counter hit, you get a mini combo. Because they squeeze them off the floor and you get a mini combo just like so. So that's pretty, pretty good. Also, if the second hit hits, then the third hit is automatically going to hit. Now, moving on from there, we're going to be talking about up A plus B. Up A plus B is a horizontal attack. It's 18 frames and it has a GI window in it. That's pretty much it. And it's safe on block. So moving on from there, we're going to be talking about B plus K. B plus K is a parry attack, and he has a follow-up from there. When you press B, 
it does a follow up. Now, B plus K is pretty, pretty good because it dodges all highs and mid attacks when you press B plus K. And you can hold out, you can hold B plus K to have the parry go out longer. So, this is what happens when you dodge is high. When you dodge highs, you could do this. It dodges high, it basically high crushes it, and you can press B for the follow up. The, and that's follow when you dodge highs. Now, when you dodge mids, this is what happens. You get a back turn animation. You basically wrap around to your opponent's back, and you hit them with the B attack, and that's very, very good. That's really, really good. And when you dodge kicks, depending if it's a higher mid, it's pretty much going to do the same thing that I showcased you before. It all depends if the kick is a higher mid. Now, you also have down B plus K. Down B plus K is pretty much the same thing, but it dodges all mid attack and low attacks. So as you can see, down B plus K dodges all mids, and it also dodges all low attacks. And the low attack, it will basically high crush it with a jump, land, and then you would do the little stab move follow-up if you press B as well. So that's pretty, pretty good. And you could also go into your Gambit Evade and do some instant prep stuff and so on and so forth as well out of the um the parry. So that's very, very good. And it's very, very, it's very, very underused. I don't use it enough. Another thing about this move is that you could do this move back turn as well. So if you ever catch yourself back turn, which probably what happened because it happens a lot, Raphael, you could do B plus K and it'll work out. Pathetic. Pathetic. So the next move we're going to talk about is this forward Pathetic. B plus K. So forward B plus K is 18 frames. It's a mid. Pathetic. It's negative 10 on block. Pathetic. And if you press forward B plus K in a certain direction, you will stab in that direction, right? So instead of having some type of horizontal attack, you could catch them with this move just like so. Now, if they just sidewalking, it's kind of hard to catch them, as you can see. If you sidewalk to the right or run right, it's kind of hard to catch them. You have to, like, really wait. But if they step to the right, it will always catch them. And if it hits, you get a mini combo from there. It will always call that type of animation, and you get a mini combo from there. As you can see. Now, when you sidestep it to the left, for some reason it hits side like side running or sidestepping, it hits a little bit easier. For some reason, it hits every single time. I don't know why it's like that, but when you go to the right, it doesn't hit every single time when you do B plus um four B plus K down. But when you do this move. 4B plus K and down, it will always hit going towards the left. But if you do 4B plus K and up, it doesn't really hit all the time if they sidewalk into the right. So keep that in mind. Now we're going to be talking about wild running moves. So he has his forward forward A. And forward forward A is 22 frames. It's a high. It's a horizontal. It's negative 14 on hit. So, just got to keep that in mind. And like I said, it is a high. So, your opponent could easily crouch under it. And, what, I, what am I going to show? I think I'm messing up. Let me know what I'm going to show. It's plus 4 and hit as well. So, it's plus 4 and hit. And it's negative 14, as I'm going to showcase. But, it does cause some pushback. But, if your opponent has like a very good... Long range 14 frame punish, they can punish it, but it does cause some pushback, so keep that in mind. So now we're gonna be talking about um sidewalking A. Sidewalk A is a high. You is so you basically sidewalk AA. Sidewalk AA is a high. That is a natural hit combo. As you can see. And you could go into prep stands from this as well. Well not prep stands, but you go into the game bit evade into instant step. It's the prep, sorry, as well. As you can see, you can do Gambit Evade from this move by just pressing back after you do the AA, um, or side, sidewalk AA. Now, one thing about this move is that it is safe on blocks. So that's pretty, pretty good. But the second hit can be ducked. As you can see, the second hit can be guard impact. If you're on point with it, 
Uh, no, can it be guard impact? I don't even think it can be. It can be guard impact. Sorry, but it definitely can be ducked. The second hit can be ducked, and it can be reversed on reversal edge. So keep that in mind. Now another follow up he has is sidewalk A B. Now sidewalk A B is a high low. And then if your opponent was it doesn't really give you advantage on hit. It's negative six on hit. And you could block the high and duck the low easily. So yeah. And it's very punishable also. It's like negative eighteen. It's negative eighteen. But if it hit if the move hits counter hit, both hits would hit. And you could hold down B. To go into prep stance as well, and you could do prep st stance shenanigans from there. So keep that in mind. And if you go into prep stance, you're only gonna be negative two. Now we're gonna talk about back back A and B. Back back A B is a mid mid. The first hit is back back A is a horizontal. Second hit is a vertical. The first hit is negative ten. The second hit is negative fourteen. It forces back turn on counter hit. It's a natural combo, and you can hold the button to go into prep stance. Next, you have four B. 4-4-B, which is 16 frames. It's a mid. And on counter hit, you can, you can hold the button and go to prep stance. And on counter hit, you get a, a little mini combo. I don't think I showcased it here, though. But on counter hit, you get a mini combo. So now we have, like, down 4, down 4, B. Down 4, down 4, B is 26 frames. It's a low. It is 20 damage. And it has some pretty good range to it. Then you have sidestep on um, BB. Sidestep BB is 80 frames. It's a mid mid and it's a launcher. And this is pretty much the standard combo you're going to get from it. And, or you could do this for Oki. And yeah. And it's negative 16 on um, block. Then you have back back B. Back back B is 34 frames. It has some high crush properties to it. It does 35 damage. It does a lot of damage. It's probably his most damage low. And it's negative 22 on block. So, yeah, you don't want to get that move block. But it's very, very good to use in combos, as you can see. So, yeah. So, moving on, we have his forward forward K. Or forward forward kick, which is 20 frames. It's a high. It does 24 damage. It causes a knockdown. And... It's only negative 10 on hit. So, yeah. Then you have his sidestep K. Sidestep K. Um, just all right. Then you have his back back K. Back back K is in mid. It switches. Um, So, it's pretty good to use if your back is against the wall or anything like that. It high crushes. And it's only a negative 10. And it causes a knockdown. So, that's pretty good. Then you have his forward, forward, A plus B. His forward, forward, A plus B is a launcher. It's 26 frames. You can cancel it as well, which I'm probably going to showcase later. And you can get a very good damage combo from it. So, yeah. And like I said, I'm probably going to showcase it here. You could cancel as well and do something like this. Only thing is, it's kind of slow. Out of the, to like act out of the cancel, so eh. but it's all right. Then you have his unblockable, which is back back. Um, was it A plus B? Back back A plus B, and you could also cancel it as well. And when you cancel it with your your guard button, you go into prep stance. So that's pretty pretty good. Rest in. You can do some little shenanigans from there. Especially if you feel like your opponent is going to sidewalk. Next move we have is his forward, forward, B plus K. It's forward, forward, B plus K. is a very, very good whiff punisher. It's 22 frames. It's a mid. And it gives you a combo when it hits. And you can hold the button down to go into um, prep. So that's pretty good. And you can do combos like this. And that's very, very good, as you can see. Now, on block, this move is plus two on block, which is very, very good for not being a break attack. 
as we're going to showcase on block. Bleed. Boom. If they block this move, you're plus two. Bleed. So that's very, very good. Bleed. So you can take advantage of your frame advantage with like AA or four B B and on if you if they block this move and you transition into the prep stance, you're plus seven. So that's really, really, really good. So try to abuse this. Now moving on, we're gonna be talking about his prep stand stuff. So out of prep, you can activate prep with norm numerous ways, which we talked about earlier. So out of prep, you have AA, which is horizontal, horizontal, and it's 40 frames, and it's a mid mid. And the first A is negative 10. The second A is negative six. Then you have AB, which is and the B is negative 14. While AA is a natural combo out of prep stance, AB is not. So it has to be a counter hit. Now, another thing with this move is that if you can hold down the B to B in prep stance again, and you get combos just like so. So that's pretty good. Now, moving on from there, you have forward A out of prep stance, and it's 22 frames. It is negative 8 on hit, plus 8 on block, and it's a high attack. So, yeah. Then, you have B and BB out of prep. And these are 10 frame moves, but are pretty punishable on block. Now, you have B, BB, and then BBB, -B, and you have BBA. Now, BBB counter hit is a counter hit combo. You get this guaranteed. Then you have... The, and the third hit on BBB is safe. It's only negative six. Then you have BB as you and at the second hit of B can be hold down to stay in the prep stance. Then you have BBA. BBA is a high high low, and it's okay. I don't really use it like that, but it can't get your opponent off guard because the third hit of BBB is a mid, so it's a it's a mix up from there. But it can't both of the mix ups can be GI'd. So yeah. Then you have BK. BK is a knockdown, as you can see, and this is very very important, and it's punishment punishment game, because this is his standard ten frame punish with that move. So you gotta learn that. Now you have 4B out of prep, and 4B out of prep is 18 frames, it's a mid, and is negative 10 on block, and it knocks down hit. Then you have out of prep stance, you have K, and you have follows from there, you have KK, and then you have KKB, and the third hit only comes out at the second hit land, so keep that in mind, and this, that you're pretty much going to be using that in your combos. Then you have... B plus K and and on um, prep. Oh, sorry, I did it by accident. Then you have then you have four K in prep, and that's a horizontal attack, and it's a mid, and I catch people that try to sidestep. It's negative 16, 16 on block, and then you have B plus K in prep, which is a needle. And sometimes when you're prep stance, they're going to be back. You're you're going to have your back turned. So his back turn people. Now. To keep yourself in prep stance, you just hold forward to keep yourself in prep stance. And if you want to do the gambit step in prep stance, you just press back to do the gambit step. And then he has the shadow evade in prep. And you just press down to do the shadow evade in prep. So, yeah. Now, we're going to be talking about stuff you could do out of the gambit evade. So... Out of the Gambit Evade, you can do A, A, B, and which is a mid-mid, and the first hit is a horizontal. Then you have B out of Gambit Evade, and this move with 24 frames is negative 2 on block, and it causes a launcher, a juggle on hit, so that's pretty, pretty good. Then you have... Then you have K out of um, Game Evade, and this is, gives you a mini launcher. And there's a second hit to it. You can do KK. Now, it's like a little just frame move. You're only really going to be using that within combos. 
Because you can get more damage if you try to use it at the launcher by itself than doing the second hit. So keep that in mind. So yeah, also like we said earlier, to go into prep stance out of game evade, all you gotta do is press forward. And I, like I said, I made a video about this. So make sure you go check that video out to learn more about that. So what am I showcasing here? Oh yeah, so I, this is stuff you could do out of the shadow evade. We have follow-ups out of shadow evade as well, and this is his B follow-up out of shadow evade. And his B follow-up out of shadow evade causes a launcher and it's a break attack. And then you have A follow-up out of shadow evade, and it's a horizontal single hit in horizontal, which is a mid. Then you have a kick out of Shadow Evade, and it's a low, a high crushing, low attack that causes a knockdown of a hit. The range on it is not that great. You have to be really, really up in your opponent to use it. So, but it gets the job done, as you can see. So yeah. Now he has another stance as well, and this is his quick parade, and you do this by pressing back B plus K. And it automatically GIs highs and mids. And he has follow ups out of this as well. He has a A follow up, as you can see, which is a low. And he has a BB follow up out of it as well. Now, let me see what I'm going to showcase. So, the low follow up, which is A follow up, you get a mini combo from there. So, that's pretty good. And when you press B. You get this little stabby, stabby move, and he does a, a whole bunch of hits. And you can also press B again to, like, automatically go into the second hit. So that's pretty, pretty good. Or you can let the B rock out and then go into the mini hits from there. And then, then press B again to get the follow-up. So that's pretty, pretty good. So, yeah, you can also hold the button. <clears throat> and when you hold the button, it automatically evade high attacks as well. So keep that in mind. But yeah, this Come this on. is pretty good. Come and on. you can hold Come when you do the quick parade, you go any direction you press after Come that, on. it will go into the stance. So you press forward, you go into prep, press down and go to shadow evade, and you press back, it will go into Gambit Evade. So keep that in mind. So now we just real quick gonna showcase his soul charge moves. So it's forward A B is this and it's the break attack. And you can hold the button down to go into prep stance as well. Then he has this as well. He has a back A B. His he gets a follow up from his back A, and it gets it's a break attack as well. And you can hold B to go into prep stance. Then you have a four B B B B, and he has a follow up from his B B B. Now that third hit does massive damage. Then back B B has extension as well. Then he has an extension out of his back or his down back K, which is down back K B. Then he has an extension out of his down A plus B. You gotta press A plus down A plus B B. Then he has an extension out of his jumping A, which is jumping A plus B, and you can hold B to get on um, prep stance. And he does more damage on his grab, as you can see. And in Prep stance, you get B, B, A plus B, and you do this. And it causes a knockdown. And out of prep stance, you can get forward K, K, and you do this as well. And that's very, very good. And obviously, that's a super, So, which I was just going to showcase. But yeah. Now we're going to be talking about lethal hit. So this lethal hit, as I talked showed earlier, you do that. You hit that move four times, and it causes a lethal hit on the fourth one. This lethal hit, if you high crush a high and do that with that move, you would catch that. So this lethal hit is a block punish. So if you punish anything that's negative 20 with that move, you would get the leap on lethal hit with that. And this is just a just frame version. It does a little bit more damage. This move is if you dodge a break attack, you get a lethal hit with that move. So that's pretty good. 
and this this is just the just frame version of it as well now as i showcased earlier if you dodge a vertical attack with this move you get a lethal hit so yeah and if you dodge a kick attack with this move you get a lethal hit if you dodge a grab with this move you get a lethal hit that you could get a lethal hit with a plus b with a, if you do it if, um if you hit them with during a gi or reversal edge and this is a, that was the second round of his a in reversal edge and this is the second round of his b in reversal edge which is a lethal hit and this is the second round with k which is a lethal hit and reversal edge so yeah so yeah that's that's pretty much it for this video hopefully you was able to enjoy the video i really wish i was able to record this video on my computer but the, the program i got to record is acting stupid but yeah if you was able to enjoy the video and you learn something new please smash the like button i greatly appreciate it also if you're new to the channel and you enjoy the content make sure you hit the subscribe button because i have tons and tons of content that i'm going i already have tons of content and i will be dropping more content but yeah if you if you haven't already hit the notification bell to get alerted every time i drop a new vif and you want to help support my channel any type of way at all check the description box below to figure out all the ways but that's it for this video hope you all have a nice day peace